Hey, what's going on YouTube? I know it's been like three weeks, maybe even four weeks since I made a video. Uh, I've just been a little busy and for like two weeks I've been preparing for this video, which is not gonna be very long, but I want to make sure my information that I give out is as accurate as it can be. So today we're gonna talk about high intensity interval training versus LIS or low intensity steady state. Now there's been talk about which one's better, which one's worse, do they both work? blah 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 so today we're gonna get into it and i'm gonna give you guys the information that i found um and i'm also gonna pin or stitch in the uh the uh websites for the for the research that i've done because i want to make sure everybody gets their credits along with the uh with the people who uh made the article so yeah man stay tuned so when a person says I'm doing a HIIT workout, I'm doing HIIT. What are they talking about? So HIIT or HIIT is actually called high intensity interval training. And what high intensity interval training is, it involves a short burst of intense exercise alternated with low intensity recovery periods. So for example, doing jumping jacks for one minute straight, then resting for 30 seconds and doing one minute of squats, then resting for 30 seconds and repeating those exercises for 10, 20, or even 30 minutes. Those would be considered high intensity interval training or HIIT or HIIT workouts. Now, what is LIS? What is low intensity steady state? A method of cardiovascular exercise in which you do aerobic activity at a low to moderate intensity for a continuous and often extended period of time. Now, this is actually the most common form of cardio. This is actually what I think I would go out on a limb and say we all start out with when we start our fitness journey. If you're not out here doing like the research, you just go into the gym and you just start doing cardio, it would be walking on the treadmill or doing an elliptical or anything of that nature for let's say 30 minutes at the same pace. It's not high impact, it's very low impact and it's steady. So like I said, treadmill, 60 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, elliptical, same thing, walking, jogging, whatever, those all would be considered low intensity steady state. Now, like I said in the intro, there's a lot of talk about which one is better for fat loss. Um, some say low intensity steady state, some say high intensity interval training. So today we're gonna dive into the benefits and some of the cons of um, um, both and see which one is best for you. And um, like I said, I've done both. I've done low intensity steady state, I've done high intensity, uh, and, but I'll save my opinion for after I give the uh, information from the research that I've done. Now, one benefit, which is probably the number one benefit that everybody cares about, is you can burn fat. Now, according to Healthline.com, and studies found at PubMed.com, researchers found that high-intensity interval training burned 25 to 30 percent more calories than other exercises. Although high-intensity interval training workouts are typically shorter than traditional exercises because while doing HIIT, you burn the same amount of calories in 30 minutes as you would, let's say, in 60, 60 minutes walking, jogging at the same pace the whole time. So, yes, high-intensity interval training can burn more calories than in a short period of time than, um, let's say, walking or jogging. But one of the cons is it's not something that you can do every single day. And it's not something that you can do for an extended period of time. Now, imagine you're spending an hour doing high intensity interval training, um, 30 minutes or I mean, sorry, 30 seconds. And you're going balls to the wall. You are going 180, 85, 90, 100%. That's not something that you can do for an extended period of time every single day. Now, two, your metabolic rate is higher for hours after a high-intensity interval training workout. So, yes, with your metabolic rate being high for hours after your workout, you will still be burning calories as time passes. And according to studies done by Haley L. Wingfield in 2015, HIIT increases your metabolic rate more than running, jogging, or even weight training. So, think about that. In that short period of time, your metabolic rate will be higher 
not only while you're doing the workout, but after you're, you've done the workout. It's your metabolic rate is higher after jogging, after um, uh, weight training. It's higher when you're doing high intensity interval training. Now, three, HIT can help you. HIT can help you. Wait, I'm sorry, I messed up. That first one was you can burn a lot more calories in a short period of time. Sorry. Now let's get back into three. HIT can help you lose fat. As we talked about earlier, even though HIIT is a shorter workout, it is very effective in burning fat. In an article published by, I'm sorry, I'm probably going to butcher this name, but study published by M. Wiwigi in 2017, an experiment excuse me, was done on 424 overweight or obese people. And the experiment showed that HIIT can reduce body fat and waist circumference. Various studies have been done in 2015, 2017, and as late as 2021 all indicate that high intensity interval training can reduce fat despite the short period time commitment, the short term time commitment of the workout. So now let's unpack that. With just that short period of time, like we said in the first bullet point, you can burn more calories. So to me, you know, I'm gonna leave that for later on. So you can burn a lot more calories in a short period of time by doing high intensity interval training. So it seems like that is the best aspect of high intensity interval training so far that we've that we found out in this research. But one con of HIIT is like I said, is very taxing on the body. And if you're not careful or properly trained, it may not be for you. When I say properly trained, I mean in a position to do 20 to 30 minutes of high intensity workout. Since it was, since it is very stressful on the body, I don't suggest starting out with HIIT workouts if you are overweight or prone to injury. Now let's talk about the benefits of low intensity steady state. One, it helps with fat burning and fat loss. So high intensity interval training and low intensity steady state both have that in common. This improves your body's ability to use fat as fuel instead of glycogen stored in your muscles. There was also a study done in 2014 by George P. Nassis, which states that continuous aerobic exercise is more effective than HIIT at improving fat distribution. So now let's unpack that itself. Now we said that HIIT can burn more calories in a short period of time, which is great because not everybody has um, an hour a day to do exercises. So low intensity steady state over time would be more effective and burn more calories than um, high intensity interval training. Two, it is appropriate for all levels. Since it is easier to do and is more gentle on the body, people in all stages of training can do them and see results. This type of exercise is the typical that we all know and that most people do. So yes, beginners, intermediate and advanced can see results coming from low intensity steady state. Now, like we said before, high intensity interval training can be tough on the body. Uh, it's not something that you can typically do on a day-to-day -day basis or for an extended period of time. So with low intensity steady state, uh, anybody can do it. Uh, beginner, obese, um, elderly, um, injured maybe, depending on what your injury is, you can do low intensity steady state. So that is probably one of the things that um, it has holding over high intensity interval training. Three, WIS allows for easier recovery. After a heavy lift day, you may want to throw in a day of low intensity steady state simply because it's easier on the body and the heart. You never wanna overdo things in the gym or at home. Yes, we have goals, but the point of goals is to actually reach the goal not injure ourselves in the process of trying to reach that goal or maybe even worse. Now, one downside of low intensity steady state would be the actual length that you have to do the exercise in order to get results. Now, I was watching a video on YouTube while I was gathering up 
my research to do this video and I don't even remember the dude's name. I probably won't listen to him again because I didn't like him that much and you probably won't either. But he was saying, oh, you don't have to do low intensity, high intensity interval training. I do four hours of low intensity steady state a day, five days a week. Not everybody has that time, bro. It can be time consuming. That's why some people lean towards high intensity steady, high intensity interval training. But if you have more time, you can do low intensity steady state, but not everybody has that time. So that's one downside of low intensity steady state cardio. All right, now with everything that we learned about high intensity interval training and low intensity steady state, like I said, like I said when we first started, I've done both. Now, I've done both at different periods of my journey. When I first started out hitting the gym, working out, I was doing low intensity steady state because, well, at 360 pounds, it's going to be very difficult for you to get up off your ass and do 30, 20 to 30 minutes of high intensity uh, interval training because you're going, like I said, balls to the wall, 100%, 90%, 85%. That shit is hard. It's hard. And like, and also, like we said, I see, I see for myself, the research, it's not lying. It's hard on the body, but it definitely is effective. None the least. If you're going to do high intensity interval training, do it responsibly. Don't try to be Chris Bromstead, Arnold Schwarzenegger, or whatever. This isn't the, the CrossFit games. It's not what this is. It's just you trying to get in shape, trying to, trying to look great, trying to be healthy. You don't have to kill yourself doing high intensity interval training. So low intensity steady state, like we said, it's for literally everybody, the young, the middle aged, the old, it's for everybody, beginning, intermediate, or advanced. Everybody of all sorts can do low intensity steady state. Why? Because it, it it's low impact on your body calls for uh, easier recovery. Unlike high intensity interval training, the recovery time, you it's not something that you can do for long periods of time. You're not going to spend an hour, an hour and a half doing high intensity interval training, but you can spend an hour, hour and a half doing low intensity steady state and you can go home and wake up tomorrow and do it again. You don't have to worry about being injured. You don't have to worry about um, your heart may possibly failing you because you went too hard. You don't have to worry about that when it comes to low intensity steady state. Now, this is not a knock towards high intensity interval training because that's what I do now in my uh, in the stage that I'm in, and I love it. I keep it in its place. I do 20 minutes. I go boss to the wall, and then I'm done. I wake up in the morning. I do 10 minutes of low impact. Uh, cardio now when i say low impact maybe i'll do another video on that this isn't low intensity steady state low impact will be an exercise that's actually high intensity interval training but it's not as taxing on the body something exercises that are simple exercises that pretty much just wake you up get your blood flowing and everything like that and then when i come home i do 20 minutes of high intensity interval training i don't go up all out. I don't do 30 minutes. I don't do 35, 40 an hour. Yo, I'm not doing all that. I want to lose the weight properly. I want to look great like I do now. I love how I look in this video. Now, a year ago, I couldn't have said that. I couldn't have said that. I love the results that I'm seeing from both of the exercises, both of the um, low intensity steady state and the high intensity interval training. They both get the job done. So don't listen to anybody. If you see a video out there that says, don't do this because it does not work. Run far away from those videos. Go find the videos that are gonna help you find the best way and the best time in your uh, weight loss journey. Figure out when to do it, how to do it, to minimize the impact and, and maximize uh, the gain that you can get from it. Everything works, you just gotta figure out a way to make it work for you. So, um, I've been doing this 12 week, um, 12 week weight loss challenge that I created for myself. Uh, it's nothing spectacular. It's just a 12 week workout um, that I'm that I decided to do. I'm on week four. Um, week one I was 296. It is the end of week four. I am 276 pounds. So we're looking at 20 pounds 
down. I'm actually trying to get down to 265. I probably honestly won't even do the whole 12 weeks because I don't want to be that lean because I actually am looking forward to doing a 12 week bulk going in bear mode, but I'm not sure yet. When I get down to, haven't decided if I want to get down to 250 or 265. Um, I guess I'll find out when I get down to 265. So here in about a week and a half, two weeks, I should be at that goal and then I'll make the decision then. But in the meantime, I'm gonna keep doing my thing and uh, keep grinding, keep staying consistent. That's all we can do. Uh, like I've said in my other videos, fuck motivation. Don't worry about it. Motivation is a kickstart. Motivation is like your your battery being dead in your car and you need to jump. Are you going to be more concerned tomorrow about that jump that you got? Or are you going to be more concerned about driving the car? You should be more concerned about driving the car, right? That jump start was great. You needed that in order to get your car started so you can get going. But now you don't need that jump start. Get going. Don't worry about it. So... That's all I got today. Sorry for being gone for three to four weeks. Um, my non-followers that I do have, I appreciate what subscribers that I do have. Like, um, comment, subscribe. I actually want to hear from you guys. Uh, let me know what type of content you guys want to see from me. Uh, do you want to see me in the gym? Do you want to see the exercises that I do? Let me know, man, and I'll make it happen. Peace.